Item 8. Director Donato, items for consideration in possible action. Okay, thank you. Um, the finance committee met yesterday and we went over um, item 8A1, consideration of possible action to rectify the purchase order 20-0170 for the Cal City Theater Repair, uh, $25,188. And Mark Mozegan is going to give us a presentation. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you, Director Donato. Evening board. Uh, a little louder, Mark. I mean, have your mic turned up a little louder. <coughs> okay, how's that? That's a little bit better, yeah. Okay. Actually, Frank, I think it's John buzzing in. What do you think? Well, you know what? I've been around too long. <laughs> hey, That's all right. hey, John. Yeah. Mark, Sorry about that. Mark is much better looking, so that's okay. It's a compliment. <laughs> uh, okay, so if the board remembers, back in February, uh, we had a serious leak on the Cal City feeder. And what happened was uh, the side, uh, 60 linear feet of the Cal City feeder, uh, the side blew out under about 120 pounds of pressure and caused a, a pretty major leak, obviously. So we shut it down and we uh, called our expert repair contractor, which is WM Lyles. They've done many emergency repairs for AVAC. They, have, they uh, submit extremely itemized bills for everything that they do. And we price them before. They're always uh, well within the range we think repairs should be. So we gave them a call, they excavated. And they found that uh, the size of the pipe did blow out, and they thought the cause of it was probably upon installation, uh, the pipe was damaged. This is back in 1980. This pipe was installed. It's an 18-inch diameter steel uh, cement mortar line and coated pipe, about eight miles long, and the leak occurred about four and a half, five miles north of Highway 58 on Cal City Boulevard. So they determined that the pipe was probably damaged upon installation, and uh, it allowed moisture over the last 40 years to seep between the concrete mortar lining and the steel barrel of the pipe, and it finally gave way. I guess one, one lucky thing, it was in somewhat in the middle of winter, so Cal City was able to utilize their wells, and it took about a week and a half for the repair to be made. They replaced 60 linear feet of pipe with C900 plastic and some mechanical fittings. And we disinfected it, pressured it back up, have not had any further problems. Um, so that being said, uh, we would ask that the board ratify the attached purchase order in the amount of $25,188.03. $25, I'd be happy to answer any questions on that. Well, go, yeah. go ahead, Frank. I just want to make a motion that we approve uh, the change order uh, 8A1. Um, Do you need a purchase order? Excuse me. Did you hear me? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's a, you said um, change order, but I believe it's a purchase order. I mean, sorry, purchase order. Yeah, per, I, made, I made a purchase order for $25,188.03. Thank you. We have a second? I'll second. This is Justin. Please let the record reflect that Justin's during the meeting. So noted. Roll call. Uh, any discussion? Yeah, Director Van Dam, I, uh, John, we don't have any insurance that cover those breaks like that. Uh, we we do have like uh, insurance through Chubb Insurance Group. Uh, it wouldn't cover something that small, twenty five thousand uh, dollars. If you guys, if you guys, if the board remembers, in October of twenty fifteen, the great uh, flood that we had, the thousand year rainstorm, that serious damage out at the Willow Pump Station, and that that was in uh, I believe it was well over a hundred thousand dollars for repairs. They did reimburse us for part of those expenses. 
but the 25 would, would not qualify, but good question. Right. Any other questions? That was a good question, Director Van Dam. Roll call vote, please. Division 7, Gary Van Dam? Yes. Division 6, Audrey Miller? Yes. Division 5, Robert Paris? Yes. Division 4, Justin Lane? Justin? Yes, yes. Oh, thank you. Division three, Frank Donato. Yes. Division two, Keith Dias. Yes. Division one, Shelley Sourceable. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Item eight B, Director Lane, Public Information Committee. Mr. Chisholm, would you like to take? Yes, I'll be happy to provide a staff report. This is uh, item 8B1. It's the uh, summer 2020 customer newsletter. This is the uh, first newsletter, newsletter ever created by the agency to go to all of its uh, retail customers. The um, newsletter is uh, shown on the right hand side and you can take a look at it. You can see that it's uh, it's based on our, on our website and uh, each of our customers will receive, the, will receive the link that's located on the bottom of uh, this presentation. Uh, and uh, if you look at the uh, newsletter just from the way it looks, you can see there's kind of a, some photographs and a series of articles. Each of those articles, you can click on those and you get a, a little bit more information. And what the intent of the newsletter was, it was contained in, in our uh, strategic plan to uh, provide more information about the agency and, and uh, to our customers. And this uh, particular newsletter was looked at in uh, fairly, uh, uh, fairly detailed uh, fashion uh, by the public relations and uh, information committee. And they looked at each one of the articles and you can see that the articles for this first uh, newsletter uh, talk about uh, how water treatment kills COVID-19, uh, how algae blooms are uh, uh, addressed uh, in our water supply, uh, talked a little bit about our, our AVAC bond rating uh, and how that is uh, well, we're in a uh, very good shape as far as bond rating goes. Uh, the ref refund uh, for safety in the workplace uh, investments in our AB scholarship endowment, uh, the SNP phase two Roseman Intertime projects where we received grant funding. We also did an employee spotlight um, uh, and the lab manage manager, Jordan Ray was spotlighted. And then we went through and did a long-term uh, water supply outlight, uh, uh, outlook uh, article. And then we gave uh, some uh, reservoir conditions and drought monitoring or drought water information. And as you uh, scroll down through the uh, uh, newsletter, you'll be able to uh, uh, read the, the articles that are of, uh, they're fairly short, but they provide some information. Uh, and uh, as the, uh, one of the aspects of this newsletter is uh, it's uh, housed within our uh, website. So each time uh, one of our customers clicks on the newsletter, we'll be able to find out how many clicks we get and uh, how, where they're coming from. And so we'll have an idea of who's actually reading it and providing some information so we can make it, uh, uh, use that information to make it better and have a uh, better distribution. Uh, sorry. <laughs> okay, it's, you're not working here. Advance isn't working. All right. So as far as the strategic plan elements that I talked about, uh, it, you know, it, uh, you can see it supports two of our, our core goals, raising the agency's profile, informing and educating the agency stakeholders and the public, 
It also aligns with our uh, goal six of our strategic communication plan, which the board approved. So with that, that would conclude the staff report. Uh, be happy to answer any questions that you may have. This is Director Miller. I, I really like the look of the website now. It looks a whole lot better uh, than it did a year ago or almost a year ago. And uh, I'm just so the eyes for uh, getting it looking a lot better. And I love the newsletter portion. Thank you. Thank you, Director Miller. Any other comments? This is Keith. I'll uh, make a motion that we approve distribution of the customer newsletter for the summer of 2020. This is Rob. I'll second that motion. Roll call vote, please. Gary Van Dam. Yes. Audrey Miller. Yes. Robert Harris. Yes. Dustin Lane. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Frank Donato? Yes. Keith Dias? Yes. Kelly Sourceable? Yes. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Item 8C, Adjudication Water Master Committee. Director Paris? Uh, yes, I believe that our attorney, uh, Mr. Martin, will have some presentation for us. Yes. Uh, uh, for the board, we uh, discussed at the last Two meetings ago when I was there, um, some issues that were hanging out there where AVEC staff uh, put forth some changes they would like in the water master rules that have gone through this very long process and now are teed up for uh, approval tomorrow. And we we did go back and discuss that. Uh, the matter was sent back by the water master because everything couldn't be resolved at the last water master meeting and water master board chairman Harris. Uh, led a motion to put this through uh, another round of discussion to see if some of those points or were not just the AVEC points or other points could be resolved. So we went through further discussions. Um, I did with the water master and the water master engineer. I talked to some other people who were interested in getting involved. Stan Powell, who's on the advisory committee, and Robert Cush, who represents <laughs> one of the other, a water bank. Uh, owner's uh, Tone Ranch. One remaining issue is still out there and the board committee wants this brought back to the board so that uh, Chairman Paris has a chance tomorrow to represent the board feeling on this one lasting issue. <coughs> Excuse me. And that issue is whether there should be a ground groundwater storage agreement or something like it that applies to the operation of the present water banks as the water banks AVEC and others to operate that were operating prior to the judgment being entered in the adjudication. And this this is covered in section 9 B and F of the proposed water master rules, which all they do now is reiterate what's in paragraph 14 of the judgment, which says that as to existing water bank operations, when the judgment is entered, uh, no agreement is going to be uh, required, which can change the way the water banks are operated, essentially. And so I thought, I took the position, still take the position, that was a carve-out, that millions and millions of dollars have been invested in these facilities, that everyone knew about those facilities and should have understood any kind of physical impact they have on the basin during the course of the adjudication, and that we really didn't want to have a contractual partner looking over our shoulder in the form of the water master and engineer when we operate those facilities um, while also saying it's okay if you want information about the facilities or you want ongoing information about the operations it's all public records we're happy to share it if there were eirs or other things that led to the construction of these facilities that's okay too we're happy to share it but we don't want to acquire an operating partner who can essentially um, disagree with how we're operating it, think they have discretionary control over it. It's just it's just in a whole other uh, level to take it to to have a, a, 
a storage agreement. Then I asked um, Matt, who sent me a couple of storage agreements that are being now uh, negotiated, including one for Rosamond, and I noticed right away that what they're doing there is on a, on a go-forward basis, they're doing a lot of things that, I, that don't apply to present operations. For one thing, they're raking off anything you extract from a storage bank to have, will be 10% less than what was put in. So on the on the theory that it's getting evaporated or lost during um, operation, and I you know I indicated to the people I talked to Robert Cush and Stan Powell and and Craig Parton uh, we weren't interested in those kind of provisions. So if you want information, we can give it to you in another form. We can have a monitoring agreement where we give you information and it doesn't look like we're giving you operational controls. So I had suggested that paragraph 9B of the Watermaster Rules have a carve-out that essentially says, uh, as to Priya, that uh, talks about all stored water shall be covered by a storage agreement. And I added a phrase to that, which so far has not been accepted, that says, except as provided in the subdivision 9F below, 9F carves out, would then carve out clearly the AVAC water banks and the other existing water banks. And so tomorrow at the water master meeting, I don't know what the fate of that request on that little insert to paragraph 9B is going to be. So I think the, that that Rob is looking for may suggest some direction from the board on, on where we stand. I don't think the way it's written now, it's not going to change anything. It's going to be an ongoing discussion about what kind of jurisdiction a water master may have I don't think they have any jurisdiction except to take information from us. So maybe, I don't know if you want to die on a hill of making that carve out more clear or not, but I certainly think you want to resist any inference that comes out of that meeting tomorrow that we will need, a, that AVEC will need a storage agreement to continue to operate its present banks. Right. So that's the, that's the last uh, outstanding issue. Okay, this is Frank. Um, I agree with you, Jim. Um, I believe that somehow we word it that um, we don't we don't need permission from the water master to store water. I think there's got to be some kind of verbiage. Um, they can have the information they want, like it's you know basically public information. Anybody else, but they don't have jurisdiction over this board. I think that's our now when it comes. Well, let me, but, but let me take, Jim. Jim, let me go one step further. Yeah, so the AV water master. Is a board that was approved by one judge, okay? The AVAC yeah. board was approved by state legislation in our act, so I don't think one judge prevails over the entire state legislators in the state of California. I mean, on your existing banks, I completely agree with you. On banks that are coming online after the judgment is entered, uh, I, I think because of the way the judgment was agreed to, that they, you probably will need a storage agreement for those future. Or if you made a, if you made a substantial, I'm sorry. So if you made a substantial change to one of your operations by, you know, adding to its size or doing something physical, that part of it would probably be subject to water master review with some kind of modified storage agreement. But the present operations, I think, were clearly intended to be carved well, out. We're going to have a that, big problem. We're going to have a huge problem. We might have to go back to court to get that changed because we're working on phase two, and it could be twice the size of the one we have right now. Right. No, we understand. Yeah. So the question is, is that we have spent millions of dollars uh, on this. We've had every – there ain't one person on that board, I mean, that has the, the experience of what we've gone through the last 10, 12 years – on our on our water banks with compared to usgs all the different legal entities that we've got to get approved to get this bank what the hell is the five member board going to say well i think it's more for me it's more the curiosity i'll put it that way politely well did you, it's not going to be that way because you know why it's going to cost money this is this is the problem that people are still not understanding somebody has to review this crap and then it becomes an what? opinion then it becomes an opinion. And then the opinion you know start because you get five, ten, fifteen attorneys involved. It's one after another. It might be cheaper for us to spend five hundred thousand dollars now 
or even a million dollars to go back to court and have that thing fixed. Well, right now that's not teed up. The only thing teed up are the present banks, and we're, we have a lot. We have a Jim, very Jim, 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 Jim. I no, Jim. Tell Dwayne, uh, the board's got to tell Dwayne to cease and desist all our studies right now and our phase two uh, banks. Because that's a problem, Jim. We're way, way out there already. Hey, that. This is Rob. First of all, I uh, thank you for the presentation, Jim, and I agree that we go forward and clarify it with the language that you have recommended. Uh, I will not be at the meeting tomorrow. Dwayne's going to be representing us, and I think he's prepared to do that motion with uh, yeah. consensus by the board. And going on in the future, I, with how the water master board's been working, I don't foresee any problems going forward with our water banks, I think. Uh, and at the end of the day, just the way that the water master board is set up, uh, any one member has veto power over any type of decisions like that, Frank. So, uh, no, no, I, but Rob, but it's the other way around. What if one of the people veto us going forward with our expansion? I don't know how they do that, Frank. That would take a motion by the water master board that would be approved by all five members. Mm. Would it give a lot of discretion to the water master to approve it or not approve it? Well, Shelly, Frank, I think going forward we'll be able to get an agreement, call it a storage agreement that doesn't uh, erode your control and operation of the bank because you're being so careful and you have so much sequel behind it, the only thing the water master engineer should be concerned with is whether that operation can, can cause material injury. And you will have covered that many times over by the time you get to the construction of it. So I think we can get to that, get through that on these big water banks. But right now, I, I will tell you, there's, uh, strangely enough, pushback from the city of Los Angeles' representative in Tohono Ranch, which has its own water bank. So I'm, I just want to get over this one hump to start with. I, I think the big, th the big banks the, uh, will take care of themselves because you're so carefully studied that we'll just, you know, we will give all that information to the water master engineer. I think this is all the product of engineers who like to have as much information as possible. And, and you know, they're, they're as snoopy as lawyers. Really, can I, can, right can this can this go into closed session? There's some things that I cannot state or open during a public meeting because of negotiations. Uh, is it on our um, agenda? I believe it is. is our is closed, closed session. session. The case well, is I don't always know. on. Yeah, I need to, yeah because it, it pertains to what our our closed uh, thing is, and I there's some of this discussion we're talking. That you need to be in, uh, filled in, Jim, because you haven't been. Okay. Well, I'm open to whatever you want so to do. So we're covered. We're covered by the Brown Act if we make some discussion in closed session. I think that's the clarification we're looking for, Jim. I'm looking for the closed session on the agenda, and for some reason I'm not no, finding it. Oh. Let me let me go back. I'll find it. Is, it, is the adjudication on there? Uh, yeah, going. the litigation is on there. Okay, then it's on. Then you're right. That's you're going to talk about that in, uh, or referring to something else. Also. Okay. Well, I'd like to know what I don't know for sure. No, no, but I, but I mean, all we're doing is delaying what, what you're, impl I mean, what you're applying. But there's something that needs to be addressed in front of the whole board, um, in closed session, because you alluded okay. to some things and you need to be brought up to date. Okay, Frank, we'll okay. handle that. We'll talk about that in closed session. Is Thank, that you. Right? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. So at this point, um, it doesn't look like we can give direction. We're going to need to go into closed session and come back up on this item. Is that correct? Well, the, if that's what the board has in mind, I would say yes. Well, I think there's still too many questions out there unless... Okay, Somebody well, let's back, uh, so let, well, Shelley, let me back up to this. What what, what I have deals with uh, the language that applies to the already existing water banks. That's the only thing that I have that is going to be considered tomorrow by the water, in the water master rules. 
if there's something with greater implications on the new basins or the expanded basins, um, I don't know that the board needs or that Dwayne needs more direction on that tomorrow. As you said, it's what, just for the existing banks. Is that right? That's right. That's where we're. That's that. That is. It all says that. We just tried to make it clearer, and we got pushback. So I think Dwayne knows that what our issue is. You know, we all want to see the water master rules get approved in the end, finally. So, Bob, do you so, have yeah, my comments the same, Shelley. I I think what uh, Jim has recommended is what we should approve for Dwayne to make a motion to approve that. Just refer it back to the uh, that section back to the adjudication and. Jim already said what the language is. Jim, you want to repeat the language that you would recommend? Yeah, the little bit of language is a, a suggested change to one paragraph in subparagraph 9b to one sentence where it says uh, all stored water shall be covered by a storage agreement. And I wanted to add, except as provided in subsection 9f below. That's the language. It's in the, it's in the margin. And that would mean that that makes it more clear that 9F carves out the present storage uh, storage operations so they don't need a storage agreement with the water master. And that's where the pushback came. If you leave it all alone, I would still say that's the way I would interpret it. But I think the, the board committee wanted that made clear. They want that language. Yeah. And okay, that's, motion? I'm sorry, Shelly, what? We have a motion. I don't. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not going to support it. I'm telling you right now, until we go into closed session, it's it's a miss. Uh, it's it, it, it's it's not a pertinent to what he just said. It's a conflict with what we're going to discuss in closed session. Okay. Okay. Let's go into closed session when we're ready. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's, that's the that's end. I just time. wanted to give everybody the opportunity. Yep. Okay. Item number nine: old business. Uh, we have your old business. Item 10, general manager's report. <clears throat> Give me the general manager's report for June 19, 2020. Um, in the Northern California forecast, this is our, yeah. our standard item. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, uh, it's dry and warm. Uh, you can see that uh, from the um, uh, from the diagrams here, this is all the snowpack. All the snowpack is gone. Uh, you can kind of see where these one lines are. That's that's the end, and so uh, that part of it's over for this year. Uh, this is our uh, um, precipitation graph, and as you can see, uh, May did very well. Uh, even though uh, it did well, uh, it did just enough to give us that uh, extra 5% of uh, water supply. And um, when we look at it now, we're not expecting much uh, over the next three months. And um, you look at January uh, and February, late January and February, where we lost all that, uh, that very dry period. That's what uh, caused us to have a pretty, uh, pretty long year. Matter of fact, if you look at this blue line right here, uh, these are the precipitation levels. The amount uh, of rainfall is uh, located in here. You can see that we're currently at 31.3, I think. Uh, at this particular point, inches of rainfall fall in the Feather River um, area, uh, watershed area. And you can see that's the second uh, driest on record. The, uh, uh, the good news is that we had a very uh, wet year the year prior that allowed us to fill uh, the reservoirs and keep them filled for uh, the majority of uh, for the next following year. So we're looking pretty good from a, a storage capacity wise side to offset the amounts that we're pumping out. So it's kind of a balancing routine. Uh, that we're doing in that direction. Uh, and and uh, the benefit for that is the water quality that we can provide to the Lake LA area. Uh, this is our uh, storage uh, storage map, and you can see, oops, did I lose something? Oh, okay. 
Uh, you can see here is the total amount of storage, uh, total amount of water that we have in storage. Uh, this is how much we banked, a little over 6,600 acre feet. And this is this gray area is how much we've actually recovered. And you can see that for the various years as to when the water came in and when it didn't. So we continue to uh, monitor the amount of water that goes in and comes out of the uh, uh, water banks for AVEC. Uh, our customer graph, uh, you can see here in May, there was almost 91% usage and we're running into our four largest months uh, of um, customer demand. And uh, we'll see how that uh, is moving. You can see that we had a kind of a, a cold, uh, kind of a colder April uh, than normal, and the resulting uh, difference in uh, usage by our customers. Let's see. There it goes. Uh, water quality updates: We still maintain uh, our good water quality, and we're still um, micro thin testing and. Uh, and that will continue throughout the summer. From uh, the water operation maintenance, uh, they've, uh, that uh, division has uh, finalized their uh, operations budget and uh, they're uh, also uh, finalized their asset replacement improvement budget for 2021. Uh, the important matter there is aqua aerobics is scheduled to perform their uh, work on our ozone system maintenance at all the uh, quartz hill the grossman and the east side water treatment plant and the phillips lab uh, uh, rehabilitation continues uh, through the summer uh, as far as regulatory updates uh, the big uh, uh, story the this uh, last couple of weeks is associated with the state budget uh, the assembly of the uh, Senate uh, uh, approved a budget in, in, on 615 is required by the state uh, uh, state law, and the governor must sign it before 7-1. Uh, there's still quite a bit of negotiations going on between the various parties on exactly how to um, uh, uh, get an agreement between the, uh, both the, the Senate and assembly and Senate version and the governor's version. The key disagreement uh, is associated with the uh, 14 billion in cuts in state programs uh, that's necessary um, if the uh, federal government doesn't uh, provide the funding that uh, that, they're, that the government uh, that the governor has requested. And uh, the governor wants to have the cuts now and then restore them later, whereas the uh, legislator would like to leave those programs operational and then cut them if uh, the federal government or the federal funding doesn't come before the state. Um, as far as our COVID-19 update, uh, we've uh, taken the COVID-19 co uh, compliance plan back to the um, personnel committee. Uh, we've talked with them, gotten direction, and we moved to move the plan to the safety consultant to review the plan to provide the uh, uh, site-specific uh, inspections, and we're uh, continuing to Im implement the various protocols, and we have no reported illnesses. Uh, as a policy reminder, I wanted to let you know that um, uh, ABEC email uh, accounts uh, used by the board to, uh, communication will be all through your email, ABEC email account uh, beginning 7 1 of 20, which is July 1st. And uh, uh, Justin Lipsay is our, our, our technology expert. He's more than happy to help anyone that needs some assistance getting all those things set up if you should need any. Uh, as far as events and schedules, uh, there's uh, sexual harassment prevention training for managers and board members on 624. Uh, Holly, was there a time that... It's between 10 and 12, the same time as the Watermaster board meeting. Okay. All right. And then the, uh, was indicated we got a 4th of July holiday, uh, which will be, um, which will be which will be, uh, what's the right term? Observe. Observe, thank you. On the uh, Friday the 3rd, and then we have our special uh, board meeting, uh, 721, to go over the budget to the workshop. I plan to be uh, around uh, until the first part of August uh, for my uh, uh, first vacation. Otherwise, I should be uh, generally um, 
here at the agency. So um, <coughs> so uh, the G general manager's report would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any other questions? Or any questions, I should say. Uh, okay, number 11, director's reports. Anybody have anything to report? Nothing to report. Okay, thank you. Um, item 12, attorney report. Uh, Shelly, I have a report for the board um, springing out of my involvement uh, in, in the state water contractors trials and woes and, and major litigation of which they have more than their share. And there's one, can, there's one issue out there that's boiling that it's, it's um, such a large issue. I wanted to talk to the board about it. It's large, even in comparison with the Delta conveyance case, which the state water contractors have now just filed a petition for hearing in the Cal Supreme Court because of the breadth of the authority that, that the Court of Appeal opinion gave to the Delta Council. But also on, uh, out there is a problem with DWR and how they view the uh, allocation of risks from third-party damage situations in operating the state project. So let me start by saying there's an article in the state water supply agreements, all of the agreements, same article, Article 13 which is a pretty simple allocation. Uh, if the DWR is operating the state water project, and if they're operating on the other side of, the, of, of your feeder or whatever facilities they put AVEC water in, let's say, then they're responsible for anything that happens in the system that is upstream from where you connect. Once it gets into your system or is turned out of the state water system, then that becomes AVEX responsibility. And that's the way people have viewed liability, we thought or I thought, until some issues have popped up over the last year or so involving all that damage that came out of the Oroville spillway problem. And what came out of that were a whole lot of lawsuits that were filed by damaged parties because of the spillway spill. And the Butte County District Attorney filed a um, efficient game code uh, penalty lawsuit that seeks literally to recover billions of dollars from DWR uh, because of that spill and what was spilled and where it went. And after all that was going on and, and the lawsuits are filed and they're moving along, they've settled down. None of the state water contractors were sued in those lawsuits directly by anybody, nor has DWR cross-complained yet. But DWR has made it clear to the state water contractors that they don't believe that we are, the state water contractors, protected by Article 13 because they claim in practice over the years when they've had little third-party problems on the system and things like that, and they've had attorney's fees or paid damages or settled cases, that that's all been put into operation, been considered operational funds and so, in essence, what they're saying is they've been charging all of us for it all along in the rate base, part of the operation of the facility. Uh, and so now they're taking the position, or they're at least saying it, and they're in the middle of negotiations, that whatever they get hit for, if anything, uh, of those billions of dollars in those other damage cases, you know, they think that they're, they're trying to negotiate sharing of that pain and that expense with the state water contractors who are resisting it. So in other words, you've got a, a potentially multi-billion dollar issue out there if there is third-party liability. So who should, who should absorb that? Should it be DWR, the state of California? Should it be people on all of the, all of the contractors' rate bases and agricultural recipients of their, of their water? So that's up there in the air, and I thought I'd just report that to the board. I talked to Joe Byrne, the attorney general counsel for the state water contractors yesterday, and told him I was going to give a report to the board about this situation, and uh, and it, perhaps that we ought to uh, drill down deeper into this and get involved in some of the thinking about it. So that that's what I'd like to report to you tonight. Uh, that's going to be an ongoing process. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, any questions? Okay, thank you, Mr. Markman, for that report. Okay. Do we have any requests for any future agenda items? Okay, item 14, uh, we do have reason to go to closed session on which items? A, B, and C. A, B, and C. Okay, can I have a motion to go into closed session, please? I'll make a motion we go into closed session for items 14A, 14B, and 14C. I'll second. Roll call vote, please. Gary Van Dam. Yeah. Audrey Miller. Yeah. Robert Pierce. Yes. Justin Lane. Yes. Frank Donato. Yes. Keith Dice. Yes. Kelly Storcival. Yes. Okay, let's um, recess into closed session and resume in uh, five minutes. And everybody can get signed on. Kelly, this is Rob. Have we gotten a Zoom link for closed session yet? Yes. Yes. I, okay. I'll, I'll resend it to you. Rob. Thank you. I, I missed it. Anybody else? Everybody else have it? Okay, thank you. We'll talk to you in a few minutes. <laughs>